AMD's cooking up the 9060 XT, and it just might be the sleeper hit that actually makes a ton of sense. The RTX 5060 Ti just dropped, and it's already looking like a paper launch. Slower than the 5070, barely cheaper, and guess what? I run a PC company, and even I got no allocation. Good luck finding one in the wild. Meanwhile, AMD just built a two nanometer chip right here in the US of A, baby. Let's go. And Outlook, oh, Outlook, it's frying CPUs just from typing. You know the drill, let's get into it. Guys, Nvidia just can't catch a break. AMD is coming for the mid range market. And let me tell you why it's not even close. Check this out. AMD Radeon RX 9060 XT is to be announced in May. So coming on the heels, of the 5060 Ti, this card is aiming to go right for its throat. Let's dive into it. Uh, AMD is said to be gearing up to launch a new Radeon graphics card, this time focusing on the mid-range segment. And boy, there are a lot of things to love about this mid-range card. Similar to Nvidia, the plan is to launch a graphics card with two memory configs. So you've got your eight gig and your 16 gig variants, right? exact same as a 5060 Ti, makes a lot of sense. It's unclear if AMD will follow through with this plan given the relatively negative feedback that Nvidia received on the 5060 Ti announcement as of yesterday. We did mention that board partners believe the RX 9060 XT should appear around Computex. Um, so a May launch is seeming very probable, uh, which may pose some interesting questions that I'm going to get into. RX 9060 XT is almost surely equipped with the Navi 44 GPU, a smaller processor compared to the RX 9070's Navi 48. And the great thing about that is low power requirements, right? Uh, a 500 to 550 watt power supply. And just like the NVIDIA RTX 5060 Ti, it's mainly going to use, oh, thank goodness, the eight pin power connectors. Check that out. No house fires over here in AMD land. RX 9060 XT should have a much higher boost clock compared to the RX 9070. The information suggests that it may even be 700 megahertz higher. Now, NVIDIA decided to lower the price for its TI segment, so AMD may have some room for adjustment here as well, which is great news on the mid-range for graphics cards. That's a really, it's really a sweet spot for people that aren't looking to ball out and spend a ton of money on a high-end GPU, thousands of dollars. Uh, this segment is very, very important. And when it comes with potentially lower power consumption, a better performing card compared to last gen, obviously you're contending with Nvidia's availability issues. If AMD can somehow make it happen, a smooth launch in May, <laughs> feels weird to even suggest that might be a possibility. But if it is, that would be a huge contender going up against the 5060 Ti. Let's look at the 9060 XT and compare it to that 5060 Ti. So in terms of the boost clock, you've got 3.2 gigahertz. Uh, obviously, GDDR6 versus the GDDR7, uh, eight and 16 gig variants. The 16 gig is gonna be the one that everyone's gonna want. That's just how it goes. Let's see what the comments, what people are saying. Eight gigabytes forever, forever, man. Yeah, it's it's not ending anytime soon, is it? These these eight gigabyte cards. This commenter says 350 bucks for the 16 gig variant. High, low, where do we think it's gonna actually land? Uh, where's AMD gonna kind of slot in there? Curious what you guys think. Guys, a lot of this is gonna come down to performance differences when the price makes more sense. So I'm very curious what AMD prices this card. Curious what you guys think it's gonna come in at. Eight gig variants of this new 9060 XT card. It's a response to the 5060 Ti. May 2025, launch around Computex, less power consumption on the new 9060 XT card. It's gotta come down to pricing, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down below. Guys, the 5060 Ti just dropped and it's dead on arrival because Nvidia somehow made a mid-tier card that's 33% slower than the 5070 and you only save a hundred yeah. bucks on it. Nvidia announces the GeForce RTX 5060 Ti and the 5060 starting at, drum roll please, 379 bucks and 229 respectively. Nvidia's RTX 5060 Ti and vanilla RTX 5060 officially marks the end of the Blackwell 50 series GPU launch. We have the RTX 5060 Ti in both 16 and eight gigabyte trims, a whopping $429 and the eight gigabyte starting at 379. You wanna get 16? You're looking at $429, and that's provided that you can actually find the card in stock. As of, uh, so today that I'm recording this is the release of the 5060 Ti. I've been looking at Newegg, I've been looking at uh, Micro Center, Best Buy, the card's already gone. This means Nvidia is charging, only charging $50 to double your VRAM. 
And frankly, if those prices and the price gap hold, there's little reason to opt for the cheaper GPU. Very true. Uh, why, why not spend the 50 bucks? I mean, that's about the same as AMD's RX 9070 and the 9070 XT. It's about a $50 gap. Obviously, we've gone through this a bunch on the channel as well. We've talked about the VRAM differences between the cards, and then you obviously have the new Blackwell architecture that's being introduced with the 50 series. So you do get some additional performance. This is another interesting thing when we're, when we're talking about Blackwell. NVIDIA made that claim that they shipped twice as many Blackwell RTX GPUs in the first five weeks compared to the 40 series, but doesn't really hold true because you're not comparing apples to apples, right? The 40 series, they launched with what? One card, the 4090 in the first five weeks? 50 series, they had more cards available at launch or more models and SKUs listed. So. I would hope you'd ship twice as many. And it really comes down to things like DLSS 4, right? So NVIDIA right now has over 100 games with DLSS 4 support. Now I have a couple of uh, caveats with this chart. One, this is an NVIDIA provided chart. So of course, if you look at the bottom here, uh, this is based on DLSS quality mode, max frame gen supported. So I want you to look at this with that in mind, it's very important. Also, some of the support for those different things varies by game, right? So you have the 3060 Ti, 4060 Ti, and then in green, the 5060 Ti. Now, this, the real reason for this is for you to say, hey, I have a 30 series card. I'm ready to upgrade to the 50 series. That's really what NVIDIA wants you to do. Awesome, maybe it's about time uh, to jump into that 50 series, provided that I can actually find one. Raw performance is, is kind of what I'm uh, most interested in. And then, you know, things like upscaling, that's kind of the icing on the cake, in, in my opinion. So let's check this out. Uh, no Founders Edition models of the 5060 Ti or 5060 cards. So you've got all the variants to AIB partners. This also means NVIDIA has no direct control over AIP, excuse me, AIB graphics card pricing. This is interesting because I thought there was an article that came out that said that NVIDIA was going to force AIBs to offer a percentage of their cards on the 5060 launch uh, as base model cards at MSRP. Am I wrong on that? How well did that work? <laughs> it was a fun thought, I guess. I know you guys, I know you have some opinions on this, so please feel free to leave them down below. And while you're scrolling down on that video, it, it wouldn't hurt to hit the subscribe button, I'm just saying. All right, let's move on. Guys, welcome to the future of high performance computing. It's brought to you by Intel. Oh wait, I'm just kidding. It's AMD and it's Fab right here in the US of A, baby. Let's check this out. AMD teases its first two nanometer chip fabbed on TSMC's N2 node. Also announces USA production for current gen chips. In a rather unexpected turn of events, AMD announced late Monday that it had obtained its first two nanometer class silicon a core complex die for its sixth generation Epic Venice processor, which is expected to launch next year. The Venice CCD is the industry's first HPC CPU design to be taped out on TSMC's N2 process technology, highlighting AMD's aggressive roadmap and the readiness of TSMC's production node. The CPU will rely on CCDs to be made on TSMC's N2 fabrication process, so it's about time for the company to get the first Venice CCDs out of the fab. So these are 6th gen AMD Epic Venice. Uh, it's gonna be based on Zen 6 microarchitecture, and we're looking at a launch of sometime next year. When next year? Who knows, man. <laughs> I'm a big fan of what they're doing over at AMD. Let me know uh, if I've got any other friends in the comments that are rocking uh, AMD processors in their builds. I'd be interested to know what you got in there. Let's see what the comments are saying. Let's dig into it. Uh, this commenter is calling out the uh, the toe-to-toe -to -toe battle between Intel and AMD with an expected launch date somewhere in 2026. These N2-based chips from AMD will probably hit the market around the same time as Intel's 18A chips, first half 2026, or maybe even a few months later than Intel. So that's nothing I would call aggressive strategy as both AMD and Intel are both moving along toe to toe, it seems. I mean, it is aggressive. <laughs> uh, AMD is going to be aggressive. Intel is on their knees right now. So if there was a time to be aggressive, it would be right now. I applaud it. We love competition. It makes the product better for us as gamers, as PC builders for us to consume. <laughs> oh, boys and girls, Microsoft just confirmed the most interesting bug that I've seen in a long time. And this is in Microsoft Outlook Classic. Uh, this cranks your CPU 
to 50% just for typing. Not gaming, not rendering, just freaking typing. Let's check this out. Oh boy, Microsoft has confirmed a bug in Outlook Classic where users are experiencing CPU usage spikes as high as 50 freaking percent when simply typing. After around six months since the first sighting, Microsoft is finally addressing an issue in Outlook, which led to increased CPU usage, slowdowns, and even freezes whenever you'd sit down to write an email. Microsoft quotes a figure, check this out, ranging from 30 to 50% hit to CPU utilization. That's a lot. Uh, the developer team was able to reproduce this bug on updating the Microsoft 365 apps version, where it was released in June 2024 on the current monthly enterprise and insider channels. No concrete solution available. Uh, if you're running an organization with several devices, I know a lot of you guys, you know, maybe work at organizations that are utilizing this, maybe you're running into it. Uh, you can update channel with options like uh, your group policies and migrate your update channel. You know what? My dad uses Outlook. Hey, you know what, dad? Open up the old command prompt. You know how to do that? Now type in reg add H key local machine software policies, Microsoft Office 1.6. <sighs> this is not good. Affected users went through several troubleshooting hoops, like turning off graphics acceleration, disabling spell check. You know what? This is eating 50% of the CPU. It might be spell check. If your spelling's that bad that it's killing your CPU, maybe typing ain't for you. As this problem is still under investigation, there's no more than a stopgap solution. The nature of this bug seems to be tied to how the software handles text fields. Well, the comments, a great solution. Hey, switch to pen and paper. Surprisingly bothered to fix it instead of saying, move to the new Outlook. That is a classic Microsoft move. They're like, hey, listen, it's broke. Why are you using that? We have this great subscription software that you're gonna love. <laughs> Guys, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, please make sure that you hit the old subscribe button if you do like these videos. I have a lot of fun making them. And uh, be sure to leave me a little comment. I'd love to know where you're watching from. I had someone from the Netherlands comment on the last video. I had someone from right down the street here in Phoenix, Arizona comment. Uh, where are you guys from? If you have something that you'd like me to talk about or uh, maybe a way that I can do this better and you have some suggestions, I'm totally open to it. Um, I'm just here to have some fun, all right? Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, leave a comment, and we'll see you next time.